So before we even continue with mass transfer, we got to define the concept of velocity with respect of mass transfer. So here we go. Now the concept of velocity, guys, you already know velocity is a very mathematical concept, which is the displacement divided by the time, which technically should be the change in distance or position with respect to the change in time. Okay. So that will be for velocity, but for mass transfer, you could say that maybe the change in concentration with respect on time is what we care. Now, remember, concentration is nothing more than a certain amount of molecules moving in distance. Okay. Now, uh, the general idea is, okay, so if we have a pipe in which we have a velocity of one meter per second in average. By definition, if we were very strict and I mark, let's say I have a system which counts the total amount of molecules passing through here, I will see that there is a certain amount of molecules, let it be flux, a flux, remember flux is nothing more than the total amount of moles or molecules per time per unit area. But we know that this is technically speaking not a mass transfer process because they are not moving per se in the concentration. So it's kind of hard to then identify. So we will see in this lecture that actually we need to give a reference of velocity because if mass is already moving, we got to define a mass transfer velocity with respect to that movement, which is pretty common in daily applications. Of course, it will be great to say, okay, then we set the velocity of the mass to zero and we will only see the velocity, or let it be u, the velocity of the mass transfer, let it be an, any number. That will be great, but unfortunately, this is not that common. As stated before, we will work with a lot of turbulent cases, so why not start from now adding that reference? Anyways, let us consider a non-uniform multi-component fluid mixture. Okay, it's a mixture which is a fluid with a lot of components which is not uniform. Having a bulk motion. So the interesting part right here is that I told you one meter per second, but if you were technical and went and check out the velocities of all the individual species you will rarely see one meter per second. You will see a lot of numbers, but that number. But we say bulk velocity or average velocity because it's the one that we are observing, it's the one that we can measure fast, and from now on we call that bulk motion, bulk in total. The different components are moving at a different molecular velocities, as stated before, as a result of diffusion as well we will then have two types of average velocities with respect to a stationary observer and someone that is not stationary. Okay, so the two types of velocities, well, these are the two definitions, mass velocity, molar velocity. You can ignore mass, even though it's the more straight approach because I don't know, mass and distance and time is easier to define rather than moles, but anyways, Lowercase u will be 1 divided by the uh, density times the total addition of the individual components. But if you are already familiar with moles, let it be uh, this u, uh, which is 1 divided by c, c is the concentration, and this is the concentration of each individual species times its velocity. The velocities then are u, lowercase and uppercase are approximately equal only if they are low solid concentrations and they are similar in molecular weight. So technically I wouldn't assume that a lowercase and uppercase velocities are the same, especially because we are talking about mass and moles, but you can do so if you want so. Talking about velocities guys, remember that we got to have a frame of reference. Pretty similar to the one of Newton that stated that if you are falling from a elevator, you will technically not know because you are 
static inside the elevator, but the elevator is moving. So depending on who sees what, you are seeing no movement, but someone outside will see movement. So a reference frame or a frame of reference will be great. There are three frames of reference. We will see only two, which are the most important ones that are commonly used to measure the flux of the component. So probably you're lost already. Let me just reassure you that we need to get flux. Flux is nothing more than the formal definition. Let it be the total amount of moles of a species, let it be A, passing through a given area in a given time. So that's easy. Total amount of moles per time in a single area. It is assumed that in a frame of reference, there is an observer who observes or measures the velocity or flux. Of course, we need to know or we need to measure the flux. If there is no change in flux, we cannot change or calculate the mass transfer. So first things first, we need a flux and then calculate the change in flux to get the mass transfer. Okay, so I have this example. If the frame of reference or the observer is stationary with respect to the Earth, or I don't, it doesn't need to be the Earth, but it will be a good example to say so, he will see this velocity, U, which stands for velocity of species I, of the i tenth component. So this guy is stationary, he sees this pipe, and then he sees that there is... Let's say that the pipe is literally one meter in length. And he calculates that one mole, which technically should be one molecule, moves, or okay, let's say that, that the average of all molecules, let's say that he gets the total amount of molecules, calculates the average, and he says, well, all these molecules move at one meter and they take one second. So they move one meter distance or change in displacement will be one meter in one second. Therefore, the velocity will be one meter per second, right? But let's say that we get a little bit more complex. If the observer was to be located inside this part right here, then you will have another thing. Now he will be flowing at the same velocity, which is one meter per second. And he will then see always the same molecules at the same distance. So he could say, well, technically we are not moving. So pretty similar to the elevator case. He's moving at the one meter per second. And all the other molecules are also moving at one meter per second. So the technical velocity that he sees is equal to zero. Why is so? Because we have a reference. And I think this is very important because if you want to measure actual molecules moving in diffusion, you gotta take out the velocity of the momentum. You gotta account for mass transfer, not momentum transfer. Okay. Okay, we stated this that the actual velocity that he will see, let's say that he was inside, and suddenly there is some mass transfer. Remember, I don't know, let's assume the die example. We drop some dye, which is at one meter per second. And this guy is also going to see, I don't know, maybe it's 0.5 meter per second. So from inside, he will see, wow, this molecule is moving at 0 0.5 meter per second. That's the actual mass transfer. But if this guy is outside, he will see that the molecule is moving at the same velocity as the pipe plus the 0 0.5 meter per second. In total, 1.5 meter per second. Now, the interesting part, once again, is what velocity are you going to consider if you want to calculate mass transfer? Well, clearly this one is not good enough because this accounts for momentum transport. Yet, the one which is here, this is pure mass transfer because we are at the same velocity or we have the reference of the, mo the movement. So this is the best choice. And I really like to compare this to this conveyor belt or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, is that this guy, if he wanted to stop, he will see that these guys are also not walking. They are stopped, yet they are moving. So the total velocity, if you were to see them from outside, you will say, well, this guy is not moving and this guy is also not moving. But because they are moving at the velocity of the conveyor belt, 
they have a velocity of one meter per second and this guy has zero meters per second but if you were to ask them at what velocity are you moving he will say well i'm static i'm actually not moving what's moving is the belt i am at a velocity of zero meters per second i am not exerting any kind of physical activities and he will tell you also yes i'm static i'm not moving as you can see and i also account for zero meters per second but of course you know that this one will be always faster because he has the conveyor belt plus its velocity okay guys so i didn't want it to confuse you that much but uh, this is a very important topic because if we don't understand the velocity of mass transfer if we confuse velocity of momentum transport with mass transport then we will not be able to calculate properly the mass transfer rate.